manufacturer of our product uh, in Huawei. And uh, uh, I happened to invent the OpenStack cascading solution and uh, the designer of the OpenStack architecture. And uh, we have finished the POC and published the source code to the stack fog. The, um, project name is Chisak. You can get the source code from Stack Fog. Thank you. Okay. okay. So first of all, uh, we would like to uh, give a background information and driving forces analysis uh, of the emergence of uh, uh, OpenStack cascading mechanisms. Then uh, we'll follow by a waterfall case studies intru introduced by Mr. Alexis. Uh, and also a more deep dive of solution proposals for OpenStack cascading by Joe Huang, and then followed by a live demo, which is uh, remotely connected to our uh, live uh, OpenStack uh, demonstration centers uh, within China. Yeah. So firstly, uh, we would like to talk about the uh, background, uh, overall background and driving forces, especially the uh, uh, the, the raw f philosophy of trying to do the, the, the cloud consolidations uh, in order to eliminating the isolated resource poolings that is ex uh, existing under the administration reign uh, of the large enterprises and businesses. Uh, we believe that the uh, uh, once isolated resource and uh, data silos, which is uh, uh, once uh, dedicated for certain applications are to be uh, unifiedly consolidated with the uh, uh, unified resource and data poolings shared by multiple uh, applications. So that is uh, actually uh, OpenStack based cloud operating system is serving as the core engines for enabling this uh, consolidations and especially bring, uh, bringing lots of uh, key beneficials uh, to the OpenStack cloud adopters uh, in terms of uh, Firstly, the improved business agilities and management simplicities. So the more level of consolidations, uh, so the more improved the uh, business agilities and the management simplicities uh, you will uh, got. And also, uh, with the uh, more larger scale of uh, resource poolings and optimize the resource uh, utilizations, you will get higher level of uh, TCO advantages uh, over the other competitors. And also here's the, uh, with the enlarged range of uh, resource automations, uh, uh, you might be, be uh, uh, extremely requested a consolidated, uh, a unified API entries, uh, which is also uh, you know, uh, trying to be uh, vendor neutral uh, and compliant with the, the uh, de facto standard uh, industry proposals. So due to the history or the step-by-step uh, -step, uh, deployment strategies, we know that for, for lots of uh, large enterprises, uh, 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 they, they, they have already in place uh, built up a series of uh, OpenStack instances, which is uh, mostly uh, distributed in uh, geographical uh, dispersed uh, data centers, data center size. So different uh, uh, OpenStack uh, currently, for most of the large businesses, they are still uh, independent of each other. So even the, the, the automations, uh, the uh, instance management and the orchestrations is still uh, you know, uh, isolated as the stovepipe uh, model. So uh, we urgently need to uh, uh, consolidate it into uh, a unified one for future-oriented cloud transformation. And also, how to achieve this uh, unified orchestrations and automations across uh, multiple OpenStack instances and data center? Uh, the answer is uh, possibly two uh, viable ways. Uh, first one is based on a proprietary consolidation or orchestration layers set on top of a series of OpenStack instances. Uh, where this, uh, yeah, so, sorry. Uh, well, this uh, uh, approaches will be featured by a proprietary API in the northbound, which, uh, which is exposed to upper layer or, uh, orchestration and management software and the whole OpenStack ecosystem applications. While the other approaches might be end up with a, a unified OpenStack compliant 
exposure, API exposures, uh, serving as the unified orchestration layers. This could be the, uh, we believe, the, the ideal uh, transformation target compared to the, to the first one. And the other is that uh, even uh, not you know, uh, addressing the, the multi-physical uh, data center size scenarios, even within the same data center, where there, there might be a, a standalone or different vendors pool of deliveries, which is uh, all of them based on OpenStack. So how do these uh, multi-vendor uh, or, or even different versions of uh, uh, OpenStack pool of deliveries can be efficiently, unifiedly consolidated with a single API entries? Uh, or in, in other words, how to do the multiple modular OpenStack cloud in the box consolidations. There's another, um, you know, um, actual, uh, actual challenges we are, we are facing with. So, the, uh, uh, so besides the, the traditional approaches of expansion, host by host, we will uh, offer another uh, viable solutions of doing the expansions by modular pre-integrated pool of deliveries. This is the second uh, uh, important driving forces. And, and of course, here's the, uh, uh, we are definitely uh, encountered with the situations where a unified uh, cloud tenant, uh, virtual data centers, or workloads being uh, distributedly deployed in uh, geographically uh, different data centers. So we will definitely also need a fully automated uh, network deployment and configurations uh, both in the layer two and layer three networkings uh, without human intervention. And also even we're requiring, uh, requiring some traffic optimizations uh, between the virtual data centers, also uh, demanding a, uh, a uh, OpenStack API driven uh, network automations. And also we are especially uh, encountered with the challenges of uh, deploying single OpenStack trying to deploy single OpenStack uh, instances across multiple uh, physical data centers. The reason is that the uh, uh, unavailability of uh, enough uh, bandwidth resources in the uh, wide area network will provide lots of uh, uh, potential challenges uh, for the uh, internal OpenStack message queue communications between all the uh, API server, the controllers, the compute nodes, and uh, networking nodes, which is uh, deployed in different geographical data center sites. So this will definitely uh, uh, involve with the difficult f uh, RPC, you know, uh, decouplings of the standalone uh, key uh, OpenStack components, uh, which is uh, uh, deployed uh, physically apart in different data centers. And also the, the challenges for troubleshooting and configuration and rolling upgrade because of the, uh, you know, the tight uh, coupling relationship uh, of the relevant uh, key components of OpenStack um, that is spread across a large uh, geog geographical areas or a large amount of uh, VM workload on top of that OpenStack platform. So we, we definitely need a, need a more loosely coupled while uh, um, horizontally scalable architecture to solve this problem. Okay, so uh, nextly, I would like to transfer to uh, Alexis uh, for Waterphone case studies for relevant cascading requirements. All right, yeah. so Mike is working, yeah. that's good. Um, okay. So basically, when we start working together with Huawei, um, we ask ourselves a few questions in terms of what is the business of doing private cloud inside of Vodafone? Um, so I wanted to first describe the situation that we have today uh, in Vodafone, which I think applies to many companies uh, or many large multinational companies. Uh, so we have 40 plus operating companies. We're acquiring companies, we're selling some of them. Uh, it, it's quite a dynamic environment. And what happens with that is that the level of technology, the level of maturity, um, the networking behind these companies are all very diverse. And an integration exercise every time um, is both time consuming and can become quite difficult if you try to push uh, standards into each of the operating companies um, that they may not be comfortable with. 
Um, another thing that, that is always important to, uh, to remember for us is the local relationship. Acquiring a new um, operating company shouldn't necessarily mean that we should break their relationships with, uh, with actual vendors. Um, so whoever they buy servers from, whoever they buy software from, um, we're trying to look for a way of integrating all of this together, but without breaking what works in these environments. Um, so I kind of made a slide of you know, what is the ideal view of where we'd like to get. And OpenStack is really something that we feel is, uh, is going to help us achieve that. Um, we'd love to achieve two things. It's one, to have a global standard API uh, to access resources across the business. And that's also true when we are going to acquire new operating companies. But also, the part that's very important for us is the global access. And with a full OpenStack to OpenStack orchestration, we can create global networks um, that are based on overlay networks. Uh, so all we need is a basic IP connectivity between the sites. We can optimize <coughs> these when, when they need to be optimized, of course. Uh, but the sort of awareness of OpenStack that a tenant can span multiple countries, multiple sites, while respecting all the local deployments and the complexities that they have, uh, for us would be a, a very good way of, of basically pushing cloud inside Vodafone and, and truly giving benefit to the business. Um, and I, I repeat that in every single keynote I give in the OpenStack conferences. Uh, the key here for us are, are really the APIs. Uh, the abstraction behind the APIs is of course important and we love the work that OpenStack is doing to, to make OpenStack work. Uh, but even more so than that, the de facto standard that the OpenStack API is, is really for us the driving force of pushing OpenStack into further places. Um, and one last note before I hand over to, uh, to Huawei again. Um, when you see these OpenStack deployments here, you shouldn't only think data center, but you should also think um, network elements, so network function virtualization, and you should look at the broader telecom space as potentially being driven by OpenStack API. Uh, so you could provision compute resources as much as you could provision network resources, all you know, globally, all instant, and all with one standard. So it's quite a, a vision, but I hope we, we can achieve that together. Uh, hello, uh, this is Joe. Uh, we just uh, learned uh, that uh, the requirement for OpenStack cascading is that uh, uh, multi-site, multi-OpenStack instance, and uh, uh, multi-vendor. And uh, we also want the unified uh, cloud with OpenStack API because uh, ecosystem friendly. And uh, um, we also need uh, the cross data center network automation. So what's the answer? Um, the intuition is that uh, if we want to keep uh, uh, OpenStack API uh, in the cloud, why not use OpenStack to orchestrate uh, OpenStack? Yes, and uh, um, the idea is very good, but uh, is it possible or feasible? Yes, the feasible is that uh, um, the feasibility is that uh, OpenStack uh, provide a very good architecture. Um, each service provide a, a pluggable and uh, extensible architecture. You can uh, plug uh, any uh, backend uh, to the each service. For example, for Nova, you can uh, use KVM as a backend. You can also use uh, vCenter as a backend. So why not use Nova as the backend of Nova? So, and uh, also for Cinder, why not a Cinder as the back end of a Cinder? And uh, even for Neutron, Glance, and uh, Stellometer. So, when we uh, use this idea to um, make the like, OpenStack cascading um, come to the choose, so um, it's feasible, and uh, we just uh, need to add some back end to the OpenStack. Um, we have uh, introduced uh, some component called uh, Nova Proxy. Nova Proxy is the back end for the uh, Nova. And uh, the Nova Proxy will be um, used to manage the cascaded open, uh, OpenStack the Nova service. And uh, um, in the same way for Cinder Proxy, L2 Proxy, 
and uh, LSD plus. And uh, in the cascading layer, the OpenStack just uh, work as the usual OpenStack. And uh, the proxy will transfer the request to the proper cascaded OpenStack. This is the way the OpenStack uh, uh, to do the scheduling between different uh, OpenStack. And uh, also we use uh, L2 proxy and uh, L3 proxy to do the cross data center or cross OpenStack networking. Okay, um, in this way, uh, the cascading will work like a flag. Um, we just uh, use the stuff similar mechanism to do uh, all things for the scheduling and the orchestration, just uh, like uh, you scheduling computer node, scheduling single volume and to, uh, to do the networking slow the at the population and the root update uh, for DVR population. Yes, and uh, I think uh, um, for this session, uh, um, I have, uh, uh, there is no enough time to dig into the technology in detail, but uh, uh, we can have a face-to-face -face talk in uh, Huawei booth and uh, to see the uh, live demo how it works. And uh, uh, I just uh, uh, gave you an example how the um, cascading will work like a flag. For example, um, we know that uh, um, the if a virtual machine was uh, added to the um, network LAN, that population will be, be uh, activated to do the networking for the virtual machine located in different computer nodes. Yes, and uh, in the cascading, if we create a new virtual machine LAN, in each cascaded open stack, they are will internally have a uh, population. And uh, for the casting, cascading layer, um, the L2 proxy will pull in the status of the new machine. And uh, if the, the L2 proxy will pull, in, uh, will pull the status of the port, if the port status is up, then uh, L2 population process will be activated in the cascading layer to carry the information from this open stack to this open stack. So uh, we use the same mechanism uh, in the uh, orchestration, orchestration like uh, scheduling and uh, auto population for na auto network automation. We use all the same mechanism which has been designed in the open stack to do the uh, cascading uh, cross open stack orchestration. And uh, uh, with the cascading, because we use a standard OpenStack API to orchestrate the underlying OpenStack. So there are a lot of benefit could be achieved from the architecture. For example, um, any OpenStack could be clashed, but the other part of the cloud still work and running. Even for the cascading layer clashed, all the OpenStack still can be managed the slow the API and the CLI for the open stack. So the cloud is always workable and uh, uh, manageable standalone. And uh, we also can um, integrate different vendors infrastructure in plug and play manner because we use a standard open stack API. So if you have one more data center to join the cloud, it's very simple. You just uh, add one proxy node and the line, register the OpenStack API and point in the Keystone line, the cloud will be joined the cloud. Uh, the OpenStack, the new OpenStack will be joined in the cloud. Very fast. It's just like a, a USB dongle plug and play. And uh, for the, um, we, because we use standard OpenStack API, so we can solve the issue for vendor lock-in. You can uh, deliver some um, converged infrastructure with uh, OpenStack built-in and then uh, integrated, integrated into the cloud very fast. And also, uh, we reduce the upgrade and uh, uh, operation and the maintenance challenge. For example, 
uh, if there is a bug, right? You have to make a patch. If you have only one open stack or um, other other way, you have to do the patch for all the cloud. But for the open stack uh, cascading, it's very clear responsibility. If when the a when the one uh, when the one's infrastructure has the bug, okay, just ask when the one to fix the bug, and the other part no need to be involved in the uh, in the, in the uh, patch making. So um, it's also scale out architecture. Yes, at first uh, the, um, the architecture is not for scalability, but uh, suddenly we found uh, the architecture could uh, scale out very, 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 very big. Uh, in our lab, we are doing a simulation test to expand the OpenStack cloud to one million virtual machine and uh, uh, can integrate 100 OpenStack into the cloud. Yes, I just mentioned that uh, we are doing this. And uh, if you are interested in the architecture, welcome to join us. Okay, okay. so uh, uh, we, we have a dedicated uh, Huawei uh, exhibition booth uh, at the uh, uh, marketplace. So welcome all of you to, to join the uh, in-depth uh, discussions. Then the, the final part is the live demo which is uh, remotely connected from China. Actually, we deployed three instances of uh, OpenStack, which is uh, uh, geographically apart uh, 1,000 kilometers in different uh, uh, China cities. Uh, this is actually uh, the, the first uh, use case we want to demo you. Uh, actually, the, the, uh, the consolidation of uh, a, a brand new OpenStack instances into the uh, unified uh, a cascaded uh, OpenStack cloud. So uh, <coughs> we, we would like to uh, use the uh, desktop sharing. Wait, wait, sorry. Wait, okay. Sorry. Uh, this, okay. Okay, so the, this is the, uh, 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 entry portal, management uh, OpenStack entry portals, where the uh, multiple uh, uh, size of OpenStacks. So actually there are uh, very administration portals of the OpenStack. Uh, you can just simply uh, entry the uh, domain name or the IP address entries for the newly added OpenStack instances. Then within uh, one minute, that OpenStack will be consolidated into the unified uh, existing uh, cascading OpenStack. So this is uh, quite differently from the traditional approach by doing the bare metal provisionings uh, of machine-by-machine uh, machine, uh, expansions, where allow you to, you know, uh, providing the online cloud services while adding another uh, OpenStack resource poolings by just a, a simple, uh, you know, uh, minutes of uh, operations. Th this will uh, uh, enable the, the system expansions uh, much more efficiently uh, under a unified uh, OpenStack environment. As can be seen, the, uh, now the, the uh, newly added uh, OpenStack uh, instance in Shenzhen cities is now already been successfully uh, added to the consolidation <coughs> poolings and also here's the uh, uh, abstract of the OpenStack software information based on Ice House version of the OpenStack and relevant uh, in the uh, resource information and uh, summary. Okay, so this is the first uh, demonstration case. Uh, secondly, we would like to uh, demonstrate the scenarios uh, where uh, Mr. Alexis addresses the uh, deploying a unified uh, cloud tenants uh, virtual data centers across multiple physical data center. Okay, so here actually, 
the, uh, uh, the, the virtual data center or the cloud tenants is uh, logging in into his dedicated self-service portals. Then he's trying to, uh, he's actually we, due to the time limitations, we will not do the actual creation of virtual images. Uh, we, we, we actually here, as can be seen in, in the, in the uh, unified uh, you know, subnet uh, address informations, where's the uh, uh, 192.168.20.20.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
ac across uh, uh, multiple uh, data centers, also based on the uh, cascaded OpenStack. Actually, this case is quite similar to the previous uh, uh, zero interruption uh, geographical redundancy. Yeah. Okay, uh, only with the uh, uh, exceptions that the virtual machines will uh, move seamlessly uh, with the whole uh, instance of both the running context as well as the volumes uh, being uh, uh, totally moved uh, within one, one minute from one data center to another. And we will also use the uh, uh, pin operations to check the continuity of the services. With, uh, uh, to prove that the service interruptions uh, with the whole procedures of uh, VM migrations from one DC to another uh, be, being less than uh, uh, one minute. So after one minute of uh, uh, connection broken of uh, pin operations, it will be recovered. Yeah. So the whole, uh, the, the, uh, actually this is a spe specific case, we're using the VDI. Uh, Windows virtual machines, you know, simulating a uh, VDI's uh, serving users, ser serving, uh, uh, you know, uh, a walking uh, users, you know, uh, doing the business, uh, having a business trip from one city to another, so that its virtual machines can, you know, just roaming along with him, uh, travelings. This is just uh, one example. In another cases will be, uh, uh, you know, um, moving the. <coughs> The, the virtual uh, applications or certain uh, you know, uh, DevOps applications between the production data centers and the uh, test and dev uh, data centers. This is just in, uh, some showing cases, you know, uh, demonstrating the potential benefits of the uh, OpenStack cascading. Okay, thank you. Okay, so lastly, Yeah, we would like to uh, welcome you to join the design summit sessions uh, dedicated tomorrow for afternoon. yeah tomorrow afternoon for the OpenStack cascading, especially its uh, uh, comparisons and uh, pros and cons comparisons with the uh, with cell cell technologies uh, cell solutions, uh, and also warmly welcome you to Huawei booth for for the uh, live demo of uh, t uh, cascading and deep dive discussions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any question? Okay. Any questions? Yeah, please. We have. Sorry, I have a little problem in this. Uh, to yeah. You oh. mean the uh, large scalability testing of the yes. open yes. stand? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, uh, as demoed, we shown the uh, uh, a part of three cities, uh, one uh, thousand kilometers away. Uh, we've uh, uh, you know already proved the latency uh, issues it is uh, acceptable for the normal operation experiences or anticipations. 
for uh, the normal operation, the, the cloud uh, administration, uh, administration and operation uh, targets, and also in, in case of uh, uh, scalability and the performance issues, uh, we, we also uh, already established a, a uh, performance and the load test uh, simulation environment. Yes. In order to simulate one million virtual machines that in, is uh, in cascaded data within uh, 100 uh, OpenStack instances. Yes. Yeah, mm. trying to simulate the, mm. the horizontal scalability of yeah, these uh, approaches. Yeah. Currently, uh, because uh, we just uh, finished the POC, so uh, for NOAA, almost 80% uh, feature, uh, just the POC, not <laughs> production code. Yeah. Yeah, the, but for Cinder, almost 90%. Uh, but for Neutron, because uh, we uh, all the feature relied on the BDR heavily, so uh, only about 30% uh, to 40%. Because uh, we have not uh, finished the uh, north, uh, north source um, mm. networking and the uh, advanced uh, service like uh, lot of balance uh, firewall and uh, VPN yeah we just uh, finished the uh, basic uh, L2 and L3 uh, networking yeah. class uh, open stack and also we've accomplished the uh, glance image management yeah, uh, uh, cascading we finished, uh, glass, yeah. uh, uh, multiple glass uh, to organize the distributed uh, yeah. major service mm. and uh, for cellometer we just uh, started uh, the yeah. study and uh, I hope we can contribute to the cascading to the community so yeah. we publish all source code and uh, ask for one big fashion not ask for no. Uh, so how about block storage? Uh, Cinder is also s already supported as uh, the cascading in the cascaded mode uh, the Cinder is uh, you know that actually the most sim simple one simplest one uh, we use yeah. global uh, keystone service as the uh, authentication authorization service. So the, the, the one data center, what do you mean global? Is distributed like other services? Um, one keystone service, but for the one keystone service, you can design it as a distributed or active active cluster or disaster recovery. But uh, all the open cascaded open stack and the cascading open stack token generated by the global system. Actually, at current uh, stages, uh, uh, yeah. uh, actually at, at the current stages, we are, we are both the cascading layer and the cascaded layer, or the native OpenStack layer, we're sharing the same keystone. Mm -hmm. This is the current approach. Uh -huh. But in the future, in the future, we are uh, anticipating keystone that federation. the possibility, yeah, doing the keystone federation, or even uh, by using the same models to support hybrid cloud. Maybe using the OpenStack cascading mm -hmm. layer as the unified orchestration uh, reference uh, reference architecture to do the heterogeneous hybrid cloud adaptation yeah. to the same uh, unified information model API. And uh, mm -hmm. globe. No, global mm. keystone service. So not not uh, deploy uh. the keystone in each each site. Well, so one, one global, 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 global oh, service. Wait. Not a, maybe not a one instance, but a global service. It's very important because you have to keep a consistent global mm. view for the resources, for project, mm. for lower, for quota, and for uh, domain information and so on. Yeah. If right. you have no global service, it's very very, very difficult to do the um, consistency for the distributed system. Right, I understand that. The question is, when you make a keystone API call, mm -hmm. right? Where uh, we go? often use, we generally use uh, PKI. In site one, you have global keystone. Yeah. Multiple keystone. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
position okay. uh, deploy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yes, I, I, I understand. But uh, for example, for virtual machine, uh, in the creation request, the availability zone will be a, a parameter option. But uh, if you did not uh, specify availability zone, then the system will give you an availability zone. And uh, for all other operations, like uh, restart, reboot, or pause, or resume uh, virtual machine, it will just uh, like uh, what uh, um, we used in the general open stack. The, the virtual machine request will be transferred to the proper computer node slow the, the API will, will, the API server will route the, 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 prop, uh, the request to proper um, um, computer node for, because the, the host ID. And uh, for availability zone, because uh, one proxy node will be uh, represented one cascaded open stack. So all the virtual machine created in this availability zone will be attached to the proxy node belongs to this availability zone. So all the later operation could be routed to the proper cascaded open stack. Um, except that, uh, for example, some common uh, um, um, setting like a flavor or host like a gate, it also could be uh, <laughs> Uh, and could be managed. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of uh, method to do that, and we have already finished uh, some. Actually, if you, uh, we can have a face-to-face -face yeah. discussion. Actually, in principle, if uh, in the API and the cascading API, mm -hmm. if you, you don't have the specification of the AZ, specific AZs, yeah. we will uh, enhance the scheduling layer, scheduling and filtering layers of uh, the or cascading layer to do the. Uh, corresponding uh, scheduling algorithms that is required to do, and also recording all the bounding relationship of the underlying specific OpenStack instances and you, the, uh, the 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 uh, appropriate uh, instances you you select for the OpenStack API provisioning. Yeah. So okay. is it Yes, open availability zone is used for the request routing. Routi. And yeah. yeah. So for each proxy node, will be configured to manage one cascaded. So each proxy is one? Yeah, one proxy only mm. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. But uh, you can have multiple proxy nodes to point to the same cascaded open stack. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 We can have a face-to-face okay. discussion. Okay. I'll welcome to Huawei booth. <laughs>